Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. Today we're talking about a man named John Flamsteed. His portrait is downstairs, hanging magnificently here, but we have some objects on the table and Keith Moore, the head librarian here at the Society, is going to tell us about them. We have uh, a couple of objects here that belong to John Flamsteed. First Astronomer Royal, contemporary of Isaac Newton, of course. And here we have his copy of the great man's work, the Principia Mathematica. Here at the Royal Society, they actually are lucky enough to have a few objects associated with the Principia, Newton's famous work. And this is a first edition. But the thing that's special about this first edition was it belonged to Flamsteed. So it's got this extra connection and he's got his name in it, hasn't he, and notes yep. and things like that. It's always good to know who a copy belonged to and the fact that they had access to that information. But we also have letters by John Flamsteed. We have a whole volume's worth here. This is a list of contents. He's writing to a Mr. Townley here. We can see some of the things that he's writing about and most of these are from the 1870s. And you can see here he's writing about Mr. Hook's watch and there's an eclipse too. So there's, there's all manner of things here. Astronomical observations and just general news about science of the period. There's a lovely little note in the beginning of this volume here about the donation of it. This collection of Flamsteed letters was purchased by the Royal Society in 1891 when the library at uh, Hall Harlow Essex was sold privately. It was said to have contained most of the books from Dr Hook's library. Oh. We didn't get many of those. No, <laughs> so the Royal Society forked out money for this basically That's when right. our yep. library was liquidated. Yep, absolutely right and, and a nice set of letters there. However, this is objectivity of course so we, we really need an object don't we and that, that's what we're going to talk about mainly. Before we have a look at this and I'm very excited about it you said Flamsteed was the Astronomer Royal. What does that mean Astronomer Royal? It's an official appointment by uh, uh, the current monarch. So these days Martin Rees who you know is the current Astronomer Royal and there have been a succession of them since John Flamsteed. Flamsteed was given an appointment at the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, newly built at that time, and it was his job to run the astronomy, make the observations. So here we go. This is an object that belonged to the very first Astronomer Royal, a position mm. that continues to this day. Just take the packing out. So this is an object glass that belonged to John Flamsteed. So this is the front end of the telescope. Okay, so this is obviously a refracting telescope. Yeah, you can see it's got a slight green tint to it. I think Hevelius said that green glass was, was the best to use, not, not white at this period. It's also fairly chipped and, and battered, but you can see how it came into the Royal Society's possession by the label on it. How do you feel about the fact there's a big label on the front of this piece of glass? Uh, well, it, it kind of tells you even at the stage when it was given to the Royal Society, it was considered a museum object and, and not something to be used. There are actually two labels. Somebody has engraved on the edge of the object glass who it belonged to. So it says Flamsteed OG 90 feet presented by James Hodgson Esquire, November the 3rd, 1737 Royal Society number 25, so 25 in the list of Royal Society objects. And the paper label pretty much repeats that same information. Object glass, Venetian, of 90 feet focal length, which belonged to Flamsteed, presented to the RS by James Hodgson, FRS, in 1737. It is lighter than I expected. You said the word Venetian, is it Venetian glass? Um, not necessarily ma manufactured in Venice, but the technique that was used, probably using flint, would have been a Venetian technique. So it's a technique, right. Look at that, a piece of space astronomy history. Very special. So we have an object glass. What we need is a telescope to put it into. Yep. Uh, so let's have a look at the Royal Observatory in the 1670s and we'll see Flamsteed's telescope. So this is a volume of tracts, so it's a series of small works on different aspects of science. But the nice thing about this is it's got a series of plates that were engraved for another fellow of the Royal Society, a man called Jonas Moore. Very good name. <laughs> uh, it gives you views of 
the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, the new fangled observatory that they just built. So this is rather lovely, lovely set of plates. It gives a plan view of the observatory and it shows you some of the instruments inside. And you can see here there is a really nice rendering of a conventional aerial telescope. So you have big focal lengths on these instruments. Typically what they would do would be to mount them to the side of a building or possibly to a mast if they were very long and you could observe using a, a relatively stable platform. Now Flamsteed's Venetian glass had a very particular form of mounting and this is it just here. Quite small as you can see for a 90 footer. Yeah. And you can get some idea of scale by the, the people here. Let me just keep turning because there's another view of it. And we can see here again, here's the conventional aerial telescope where the object glass would be in one end and the observer would be at the other with an eyepiece. A huge, huge, massive, massive things. You'll see here in this huge prospect view, which includes the observatory building beautifully, here we have Flamsteed's observatory for this object glass. His little nook. So that glass there used to live in that little dome there, in that little outpost. Yeah. So what this is, is a well telescope. So ah. the object glass is at the front end, but there's a huge pit there, oh. 90 foot deep, and that's how they would make the observations. You're only going to get a snatch of the sky, so this is a parallax instrument. That's what Flamsteed was interested in. But by using a well, he thought that he could manage to make stable observations. Okay, but the price you pay for being at the bottom of a well is you lose that ability to, yeah, you to pivot and... That's right, you've got yeah. no, no movement at all. In fact, it was, uh, we think, wildly unsuccessful. We don't think he managed many uh, observations from it at all. Uh, but you can see you know, these, these are astronomers wrestling with particular problems caused by the, the sorts of glass that they were using. What's this, Keith? This is the entrance to the well? Yes. Yeah, so, so, I mean, it's a very easy to miss detail there because your eye is taken to the compass rows there. But yes, if you, if you take a look there, this is little kind of curious hexagon with what look like steps leading down is leading you down to the depths of the earth. So there's a little Latin inscription to go with it. And uh, yeah, there's the instrument for observing the parallax. It looks like it was 120 steps, maybe. I can't read Latin, but <laughs> that must have been amazing going down that. Yeah, you can still go to the Royal Observatory, of course, the old Royal Observatory, but the, the pit was covered over and its location is known but uh, lost. I think there's a little circular set of bricks or something in the floor that marked its position, but that's, that's all that remains apart from this rather lovely glass. Fantastic. Thank you so much for showing it to me and letting me hold it. And this panorama, Look at that. Look Lovely. at London, looking over London and the famous Greenwich Observatory, of course, where Greenwich yeah, time You can comes see from. sailing vessels passing Greenwich on the River Thames there. Lovely. Amazing. What have we got, Keith? What okay. have we got? Well, we have here three very large lenses, and these are lenses from aerial telescopes made in the 1680s. So you can see they are inscribed and the lenses themselves are rather nicely mounted. And these were made by Christian and Constantine Huygens, the great Dutch instrument makers and astronomers. And what you have here is a lens of glass and it's mounted. For July or for June or what month is that? Yeah, it's for January, I think. 